I'd just quickly like to pay my respects to the Kamilaroi and Gumaroi people of the Kamilaroi Nation. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the Indigenous and non-Indigenous Elders, past, present and emerging. And I'd also like to acknowledge the sacrifice made by our forebears in providing us with the incredible opportunity we have in having a safe and prosperous nation to live and operate in. I'd also quickly like to say a huge thank you to Jody, uh, Nicola and the rest of the Nuffield team. Um, it's just an amazing opportunity for all of us to get together. Uh, obviously after COVID it's been a bit of a tough um, period for social distancing and um, yeah, I commend you guys on, on what you've done and getting through it and um, especially having the conference here in Tamworth. Um, the beating heart of Nuffield is in, in the country and it's nice to have our conference out here. So just put our hands together to Jody and the Nuffield team. So, Nuffield 2018. It was a whirlwind of awesome. Um, as some of, or most of you experienced, um, your lives have been changed through the organisation of Nuffield. Um, my Nuffield journey was full of challenges and ups and downs and all the things that we all have to contend with when it comes to managing work and life and um, getting four months out of the year away. And um, I think that experience of, of forcing yourself to be away from your businesses um, helps you grow and make you a better person and a better manager. Obviously, the experience reverberates for a lifetime um, and, yeah, through everything that you do in life and both your personal and business life. Um, and in my opinion, it's all about networking and contribution. Um, that's the power of Nuffield. So we we're on the 2018 um, Africa GFP. Um, and this is, uh, yeah, this is our group um, in Kenya. Uh, meeting the High Commissioner for Australia and um, Kenya. Uh, I'd like to make a special mention for um, the late, great David Stanley. Um, he was one of our hosts for Kenya and he was, uh, yeah, one of the 1965 Kenyan scholars. His family, intergenerational uh, farming family in Kenya. And um, they're milking 300 dairy cows out in the paddock by hand with six milkers. They'll go out the have a head bale with hay in it and the milkers will call over by name the most productive cows because they get paid by how many litres they milk they um, milk for the day. So they'll call them over by name, sit down on the stool and, and milk away. So that's the amazing thing about Nuffield from that to Riverview Dairies in Minnesota that have 100,000 cows milking 10,000 cows under one roof 24 hours a day on a 100 bale rotary. And that's the sort of breadth of things we've seen. Um, just while I mention it, Nicola and I were having a bit of a joke before about um, it's not a Nuffield scholar, I mean it's not a GFP if you didn't have to bunk in bed with uh, one of your other scholars, so Slady and I at the back there went tip to toe a few times in bed. Um, Shannon ended up with a baby though, so I don't know what, uh, I missed out on that bit. <clears throat> so... My topic uh, was the deep placement of organic amendments. Um, Travelled the world and realised what we're doing here is pretty specific to what we'd, um, our conditions and our soil types. So, um, yeah, had to really pick a lot of small things from different um, technologies and a lot of different people uh, around the world, um, as Dan said. And Bernie said, um, talking about the um, Fail small, fail often, and fail on screen. That's what the guys from Saskatoon in Saskatchewan um, told me. And um, yeah, really learnt from that um, and took that into to my technology, building a subsoil manuring machine when I got back. Um, so I was approached by Sustainability Vic and um, they were trying to manage um, green waste from Melbourne, um, work out a way to not put it in landfill and have it just producing methane. So. They were interested in deep placing that um, in, into the subsoils. So uh, we paired up and, and we built one of Australia's first commercial subsoil manuring machines uh, and sold it to Yallick Estate, uh, Yallick Agco, and um, yeah, their contract commercial subsoil manuring organisation now. Um, this is the machine we built. Um, yeah, just um, 
rips, rips into the subsoil and um, drops compost down into the chute and you end up with a, a deep band of compost in your hostile clay subsoils. So, um, yeah, this is a field day we did back in 2019 um, on a farm just uh, west of Geelong. Um, and, um, yeah, sort of getting people together and, and showing what the machine could do. So, um, yeah, the real benefits to, to the Nuffield experience. So, the whirlwind since uh, my ex Nuffield experience in 2018, uh, as we've all experienced, it's been somewhat of a vacuum of time. Um, it's hard to know whether it's been 20 years or three, but um, when Jody asked me to do a where are they now, I was like, geez, am I, am I that old? But anyway, so um, I purchased a 700 acre uh, ex prime property um, and um, yeah, converted this back into farmland over, over three years. Learned a lot about um, yeah, forestry reversion. Um, I was lucky enough to become a member of the Young Farmers Advisory Council, advising the Victorian Ag Minister around the needs for young farmers, which is obviously relevant for all of us here and what we're trying to achieve at Nuffield. Um, I became the president for the Lake Charlie Grau Country Music Marathon. It's the biggest um, event in the West Wimmer Shire Council, Country Music Festival. We're coming up to our 30th 30th birthday in Feb next year for anyone who's in that part of the world. Um, uh, help support and advocate on behalf uh, of the Victorian South Australian cross-border community during the cro uh, border closures of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and recently uh, undertook a Rabobank Executive Development Program, uh, which I'll go on to later. And uh, earlier this year, I bought another 800 acres of ex blue gum um, country on the western edge of the Grampians. Um, and started the process of reverting that back into farmland. Um, so, yeah, sort of um, the places that and opportunities you get um, when you put yourself out there and, and willing to work and contribute. And, um, yeah, luck, lucky enough, that photo is not formatted very well, but um, it was lucky enough to um, be asked to Christmas lunch um, with the Honourable uh, Linda Dessau uh, and her partner and... Um, and yeah, it's just uh, a really humbling experience. So, um, the Young Farmers Advisory Council uh, is, a, is a seven member committee that advises the Victorian Agriculture Minister on needs for young farmers. Um, we've really taken it on as um, our charter to forge pathways for young people to get into agriculture. Um, you know, with a, with a bit of a desire to make Australia into an agricultural superpower to rival the likes of the Netherlands. Um, innovation, technology, education and young entrepreneurs being key to the growth in getting us there. As a council, we've been pushing to ensure there is a clear guided pathway for young people of today to enter the industry, prosper personally and drive the productivity and innovation of the future. We have recently guided a team of researchers to undertake a substantial report with five key pathway options for young people to enter the industry. We have fears that asset inflation, as Bernie spoke about um, over recent years, provides a greater barrier to entry for young farmers coming into the industry. Some of the major opportunities um, for future young farmers, I don't need to tell you guys about, but. Some that we see, um, especially based around technology uh, and where the mo world's moving in terms of um, yeah, software and, and um, algorithm-based systems. Um, so yeah, basically, um, as Bernie spoke about, yeah, trying, to, trying to get um, people into the industry through building contracting businesses, um, supporting and providing new technology servicing agriculture. Um, increasing the use and need for software supporting agriculture. We spoke a fair bit about this at the um, uh, at the Rabobank EDP, and um, yeah, some of the incredible work, especially in corporate ag, um, with um, the new technologies around apps, um, sensor technology, um, yeah, all things from um, logging near miss incidents and um, those sort of things. So really see that as a route that young farmers can really tap into and has a huge amount of upside potential when it comes to um, finance. So, um, yeah, young farmers can combine multi-stream incomes to enter into land ownership. Um, 
building income and land area over time. So yeah, starting small and um, getting in with uh, a cash flow business or an off-farm income. And um, yeah, there's variable sources of capital nowadays when it comes to private equity, private debt, um, super funds really starting to come into the industry. So um, yeah, there's a huge mix now that there probably was less of 40 years ago. Um, some challenges for future young farmers. Um, Increasing size uh, and land prices, uh, barrier to entry, as I spoke about. Intergenerational wealth transfer is still the dominant practice, benefiting the haves, I suppose. And interest rate uncertainty and tightening lending standards, making it harder to get loans. Basically, um, that's a graph showing that um, over the last 40 years, we've seen a halving of the number of farms in Australia. Uh, obviously, a huge amount of consolidation, as we've seen which in making parcel sizes bigger and yeah, the routes to entry uh, for young farmers a little bit harder. Uh, so yeah, my business and educational journey um, started started contract hay baling business. Um, like uh, the first year, first year I left school um, and I've used the combination of contracting and purchasing land and um, yeah, the cash flow of, of the contracting businesses has worked in really well with buying land. Um, so yeah, in 2009, I bought 640-acre property, uh, grazing property, and um, yeah, sort of ticked along with a few different things since, and um, a bit of education um, in the middle. Um, so yeah, some of my key takeaways uh, for future young farmers. How am I going for time, Daniel? All good. Uh, yeah, so some of my key takeaways for future young farmers. As I spoke about, time in the market is critical. Get in as soon as you can. Um, combination of contracting and land purchases or off-farm incomes and land purchases is another way. Um, debt financing is critical. Um, having a good relationship with your bank, um, understanding financial literacy and um, not being uncomfortable with debt. Be, let debt be your best friend because it'll work for you. Um, Early entry, massive benefit. Um, the old adage, profit for vanity, sorry, profit for sanity, turnover for vanity um, is, is very true. And um, value investing speeds up the equity growth. So you're not just relying on capital gains to get equity. So value investing um, in, when I was uh, in Ukraine on Nuffield, Happened to be searching on realestate.com and um, saw an ex-forestry property close to my place uh, for sale. So when I got back, um, yeah, put a deposit on the credit card basically and um, secured, secured 700 acres of, of a bit of a headache. But yeah, it was um, very much an amazing experience. Um, and this started the journey for land use change from forestry back into agricultural production. Um, the first property has seen a 400% increase in value in four years. Some of that's obviously been in a, in a pretty sweet spot when it comes to capital growth, but yeah, a, a fair bit of it is um, the value added from changing the land use. Um, so yeah, forestry reversion. The properties are bought at a discount, um, which gives you the ability to um, add the value um, by removing the stumps. Um, there's different methods for removing the stumps. There's grinders, excavators, um, bulldozers. I chose a slow and low cost method, which was buying an excavator and plucking them out one by one, by one heaping them up and burning them. And yeah, it's a bit of a process, but um, yeah, good fun. So that's a slab. Um, uh, so yeah, and um, the, the slower and low cost method um, for me was around maintaining the margin between the purchase price minus the reversion costs and what I've got at the end. So uh, I didn't have to load too much debt to get that 400% asset growth. So, uh, and then um, what I've learned since um, is ensuring that you get in cash flow as soon as possible, whether it's through cropping, uh, grazing or leasing. Um, yeah, like I've said, speed to reversion is key. Um, Doing your groundwork, understanding your price points, so knowing what to buy, what you can afford to pay with whatever cost you get, it's going to cost you to revert it, and how much obviously cash flow is going to be. Doing soil tests, getting your soil type worked out, know what you're working with when it comes to productivity. Um, 
get your pasture and crop in the ground as quick as possible, keep the cost low, and use kangaroo fences. <laughs> so they'll destroy you otherwise. <laughs> um, so now for a few fun um, photos. Hopefully they're going to work. Um, and um, we'll go see if that one's not working. This one is. So this is post, um, yeah, after um, the stumps are out of the ground. This is um, Bessie, the excavator, um, just heaping, rowing them up. Uh, and that's, yeah, after uh, we've got a bit of pasture in there the year following. Uh, this is D7 or D6 dozer, doing a bit of pushing up. And this is the nightmare getting bigger and bigger. So that's a 700 acre pine property. Um, a bit of gear. Um, yeah, and this is the payoff at the end of it. Nice bit of clover for some lambs. Uh, that's a ute getting swallowed up by the rye corn. Um, so yeah, my future in business, where am I going next? Um, value investing for me is where I want to be. Um, combination, um, adding onto the free range pig, adding onto my pig business. Uh, I'll probably try and get a free range piggery set up um, at the, the pine block that I've reverted um, and then follow the opportunities wherever they may take you. Um, so on to something that um, I think we're all sort of keen on is um, working out how we can keep growing beyond Nuffield and, and what um, we can do um, to keep challenging ourselves. Um, last week I finished Module 2 of the Rabobank Executive Development Program um, and yeah, I'd have to say that after Nuffield um, this is the most important sort of educational growth program that I've done. Uh, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Um, it's, um, yeah, helps you assess if your business has earned the right to grow. That was a massive part of um, what we did. Um, and it's an amazing smorgasbord of the best tools to help you grow both personally, as a family or team and business. And it gives you access to some of the best experts in, the, in Australia. Um, the EDP, uh, it's two one-week modules spread over 12 months normally when it's not COVID times, um, and it's got amazing breadth of topics, um, from, you know, your psychology, health, um, to global megatrends and everything in between. Um, the partner program I thought was a fantastic part of, of it. Um, the partners are invited to come for the second half of module two and are integrated pretty smartly into the program, and that helps when you leave the program, integrating back into life. Um, and hitting the ground running as a team and um, yeah, ensuring that there's no friction or anything when it comes to partners. Um, the EDP runs across Australia and New Zealand, so we had a New Zealand guy, Rory Bragg, uh, he's got 3,000 cows, um, uh, Kiwi farm, and um, yeah, these are the sort of amazing people that both we at Nuffield know about and, and we get access to in New Zealand through the EDP. Um, and yeah, we like, finished off last week with um, a meal at um, Neutral Bay in, in Sydney um, and a lot of the Rabo execs and um, guys were there and yeah, it was really fantastic to be able to meet those guys. Um, some of the other leadership and development opportunities open um, after Nuffield, um, the Australian Rural Leadership Foundation and the Australian Rural Leadership Program is another amazing one that some of you may have done or know about, um, but it's certainly something that interests me. Um, and Xander McDonald Award, I think Richard Raines was at the dinner last night. Um, this is another really great mentoring program and um, that, um, yeah, I would encourage everyone to apply for um, who's able to. Um, and just finish on this um, Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second best time is now. Thank you very much.